Hello and welcome to another video. In today's episode we are continuing our journey towards understanding the Arch Linux installation procedure and well we are going to continue our exploration of the um, installation guide so just a reminder that if you are installing your own system especially if you are installing it on a real computer that you are planning to use then please follow along this installation guide because this on the arch wiki because that will always contain the most up-to-date information so don't just uh, blindly listen to this video this video is uh, mostly for your um, to help you to understand exactly what is going on during the installation process so let's uh, get into it and of course if you want to see more Arch Linux related content you should subscribe to this channel because this uh, installation process and other deep dive videos on Arch Linux and other Linux and free software related content is coming uh, down uh, the pipes in the future so in our last video we finished localizing our system so let's jump to the network configuration and well we are continuing with the system config so we already have did the uh, Cheroot environment we are going to be in the Cheroot environment so we already installed the um, basic packages and we can um, move around in our system so let's get into the main part of today's video which is going to be the network configuration so you can see that on the arch wiki if we check out the this installation guide there is only just the minimum setup that you should be doing but you can check out like following this link about the host name which will give you a little more detailed information um, so unfortunately in our case we cannot use the power of systemd like this hostname ctl is uh, not going to work so you can see that some of the systemd tools like this will not work inside the cheroot environment so we will have to set up all these things manually which means we will have to create a hostname and a machine info file well the hostname is only the mandatory one you can um, have a machine info file if especially if you have a lot of computers so this hostname will contain only one line and one line only as you can see in the uh, manual here so this one just contain a single new line terminated hostname string which is kind of restricted which it what kind of contain uh, characters it should contain but this is going to uh, identify your computer on the network for other computers but you can use this uh, machine info file to give like a pretty host name which will be better for the humans who need to identify the computers you can give like a icon name if you want to for some kind of graphical applications that will have you explore the network like this chassis if you want to specify what type of computer or location where this computer is located if you have like a uh, hundred uh, computers that you are uh, trying to identify maybe it's a good idea to use this well we're just going to do it for fun so uh, let's go to our virtual machine so you should uh, have uh, let's be okay so let's check you should check that your system is mounted so your new the system with the partition which contains your new system is at slash mnt and the boot partition is mounted at slash mnt slash boot so if you just uh, did the previous step and just doing this step then this is like the mounting is already uh, done for you and you are already in the arch cheroot slash mnt 
probably but if you just turned off your computer and uh, turned it on again and uh, that's how uh, like you, maybe you did the localization and then you turned off your computer and now you turned it back on so you should have uh, booted with your arch ISO USB stick and uh, then mount this uh, mount like this mount the file systems like this and do uh, get into the cheroot environment and once you are in the cheroot environment we can um, let's just list what's up so we should go into the slash etc uh, folder by cd etc uh, let's see what's here you can see there are a lot of things already but and let's clear this up we will need to create our host name by basically um, creating this etc slash hostname file because this will only contain just one single line we can try the the trick like echo uh, we'll just call it nice micro vm and we can use this uh, this uh what is this the larger than sign to create the hostname file so we are in the etc directory and we are creating a hostname file and now we can just get slash etc slash hostname and you can see that it contains it we can also create the 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 machine info file maybe we want to give like a pretty host name and uh, like uh, the chassis is a vm and deployment is development you can check all the options that are kind of useful in this uh, manual that you can find it in the description of the video so basically let's uh, create a file for this we can just you can use your favorite editor maybe nano or vi whichever let's uh for the beginners let's just do the nano so the file name will be machine dash in info if uh, i'm just gonna double check it for machine dash info yes and then we can oh yeah it doesn't work i don't have i didn't install nano in this root environment sorry i only installed wait i think i installed actually vim yeah so if you installed vim or installed nano if you installed nano on your new system it will be available from the cheroot environment if not then it won't be so be mindful of that so let's uh, try start typing pretty underscore host name this should be pretty underscore host name it should be um everything should be uh, capitals here and then you should use the quotation mark and I just call it nice micros VM and then I can add chassis equals VM chassis should also be for all capitals and deployment equals development and you can even add like location if you maybe you know it's if it's a computer in your kitchen sink if you can add location kitchen sink i won't do that so i will just define these information and if you are in vim for some reason then colon wq to write and quit the file and then let's uh, just uh, cat out slash etc slash machine info to check if everything is good 
Okay, so we basically set up the basic identifi uh, identifiers of our computer. So it will be found on the network by this name if the network will be available. But there is some other things we have to do, and that is we have to configure some kind of host name resolution because, you know, mostly the host names in our modern era will be resolved using the DNS protocol and uh, through a DNS server, but maybe when the system boots there is no network, so some kind of the local uh, IP addresses should be um, able to be resolved without that, and that's where this etc slash hosts file come into play. So basically you can read about it in its manual. There is some examples so you can see that even you can just give some kind of other computers like other IP addresses here that you want your computer just every anytime you go for this address you don't want it to use a DNS server to look it up, it just you just want your computer to automatically jump to this IP address. And well, that's it basically. So let's uh, do this. And for that we will have to create... So this is like the basic information that your file should contain. So... Let me jump back to the virtual machine, so I will just move in. And this, the file name is, so we are still in the etc directory, so we are editing etc slash etc slash hosts. And you can see this file already exists. So, we can just start typing 127.0.0.1 tab localhost and then colon colon one tab localhost and then 127.0.1.1 tab and then this is the name that you gave your computer it's nice micro dash vm for me dot local domain and another tab and then you give the name again. Nice micro vm in my case. And then this is uh, basically the end of the file. So let me write and quit. And so let's just cat out slash etc slash hosts. And then slash etc slash hostname. So we can compare, did I write correctly, nice micro dash vm is in both. So I wrote it correctly, so that's good. Okay, so this is the basic setup for your network configuration. And then we can go to the initramfs generation. So the initramfs is basically containing like an image of the virtual file system that first loads as your uh, system boots up, it will contain the Linux kernel, and whenever you install the Linux kernel upgrade, the Linux kernel with Pacman, Pacman will run a so-called Pacman hook, and that hook will generally regenerate this initram image. And so the only time, so because when we run, ran Packstrap to install the essential packages, then we also installed the kernel and then this initram file system has been generated as it is uh, described here in the arch wiki and in some specific cases like lvm or system encryption or raid you actually need to modify this uh, initram file system so there is this uh, make initcpo.conf file on your computer that contains like what kind of modules should be included inside this virtual file system that loads uh, on boot up. And so in some cases like the full system encryption, you should uh, change this in to some degree. And when this is changed, you of course need to regenerate 
your uh, your initial um, file system, this initial virtual file system with this making it CPIO command. But for that, you should check out the specific use cases and just do it like that. But if you are just working with a plain old uh, uh, system, plain, plain, simple Arch Linux installation, then you can just uh, maybe go to cd slash boot and ls and list out this image. You can see that there is a Linux fallback and the Linux image for the initram fs already, which has been created by this pacman hooks after installing the kernel. So after we generated the initram fs, we can give a password to our root user. The root user should have a password. So just a random person cannot just boot up our system and log in as root and screw up everything for us. It's not like <laughs> it would be so difficult if someone has physical access to a computer or whatever. You should give root a password. Um, some people argue that it is better idea to not have root login at all, so just not let in root, but for that you will have to configure sudo first, which and we don't have sudo yet, we will configure sudo after the whole system is installed, so for that purpose we should have the password for the root user and our root can be done using the passwd command. So passwd and enter and then you can just enter a password and enter it again. And now the root user on this computer has a password. Okay, you can see that if someone has the Arch Linux um, ISO burned on a USB and have physical access to your computer, that person just can boot your computer with the Arch ISO root into your system and change your password if there is no encryption and so yeah so that's why you should keep your door locked even though you have a root password okay i think this is the end of my uh, presentation for today so thank you for joining me on this journey uh, and well we will continue this journey in the future with the next steps of installing Arch Linux on your virtual machine or this similar thing will work on your physical machine. And so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed or learned something from it. And well, leave a comment if you have any questions or comments and I will see you next time. Bye bye.